Okay, um, just turn this thing down a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay, welcome uh, people who are sort of logged in. I don't know how many people we've got logged in at the moment. Sal, is there about seven people? So there's seven of us uh, tuning into this webcast. I just want to introduce you. In a minute, I'm going to hand you over to Joe Allenson from uh, Learning Development. Uh, Joe's going to give you a, a, um, a presentation, basically, uh, lasting about half an hour. There's a break halfway through for us all to stop and reflect upon some of the material that Joe's going to be presenting to you. Um, the, the, the subject is critical reflection, thinking and writing and primarily it's aimed at uh, BSc social work students uh, years two and three but we have advertised this widely across the MA social work program and uh, across faculty as well I believe so there may be people who aren't necessarily linked in with social work uh, watching today. Um, just really want to basically give you a bit of history. Last year we um, attempted to do some webcasts and we put on about five webcasts on a variety of topics and the response was uh, was encouraging and we decided this year to continue with that and uh, uh, we this is a repeat webcast from last year which uh, unfortunately we, we weren't able to record um, but this year hopefully the uh, recording of this will be made available to you on SharePoint. Um, interestingly we chose this time of day for the webcasting because we felt that um, students in particular, they may be out on placement, but they might be able to get access to a computer for half an hour during the day, maybe inviting some of their colleagues to, to, to view the webcast as well. Um, obviously, uh, evenings and weekends are out of the question, so we've tried to find the best time during the day. If uh, you've got any suggestions about how we might adapt that, then feel free to uh, speak to us, okay? Um, so. Without any further ado, I'd like to now hand you over to Joe, who um, is going to take you through uh, the presentation around uh, critical reflection, thinking and writing. Okay? Okay, Joe. Hi, Andy. Thanks for that introduction. Um, if you can put me in the corner there. Um, so this is just an introductory slide to this presentation, a um, little bit about uh, learning development and who we are, and as Andy said, this is a, a presentation on critical reflection, thinking and writing, primarily aimed at the social work students, um, years two and three, out on practice learning placements at the moment. Um, Basically, um, learning development are a department that are aimed at supporting all students across all faculties and all levels at the University of Plymouth. Um, so we can give any academic advice, but that advice is non-subject specific. So if you're having any trouble with writing essays, referencing, researching, or anything like that, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. A number of ways that you can access our resources or get in touch with us. The first is through our portal pages. Uh, the address you can see on the screen here. Uh, you will need your University of Plymouth uh, login and username to access those, but there's a range of study guides and additional resources and links to other sites that are useful for academic studying. We have an email service. Again, you can see the address on screen here. The best email address in the university, simply learn at plymouth.ac.uk. Uh, you can send small sections of your work or any academic question to this email address and one of our, our advisors will respond to you as quickly as possible. must emphasize that this isn't a proofreading service. We can't proofread your work. We can offer general feedback and comments and only on small sections of your work, not whole assignments. We offer group workshops, so if there's a collection of students who want to get together and address a specific issue, then please get in touch with us and we can do that. We also, also offer individual tutorials, which are done on a one-to-one -one basis and are completely confidential, again, about any academic issue that you might have. And you can book those by the telephone number 01752 587 456 or going to 3 Portland Mews here on the Drake Circus campus. Finally, we also have a drop-in zone, which is in the library, on the first floor of the library, just on the right-hand side as you go in through the main entrance. Um, every day of the week, at certain times, there is a learning development advisor there. There is a timetable up in this area to see when there will be a learning development advisor there. Uh, you don't have to book this service. You can just turn up and ask any questions that you might have regarding your studying. So that's a little bit about learning development. So we'll now move on to the presentation uh, that we have outlined for today. 
So this is going to be on critical reflection, thinking and writing. Have I got? Um, first, what we're going to cover is uh, what is critical thinking. Um, quite often, students see this written on feedback of their assignments and their work and uh, feedback that they get from their tutors. There's not enough analysis or critical thought gone into their work. So we just want to clarify a little bit about what critical thinking is. And then how this can impact our reflection on practice, on our learning, in any aspect of our studying or life. So how critical thinking can play a part in that. Then I'm going to introduce a critical thinking model to you that's been developed here at the University of Plymouth. Uh, it's a very simple model, but it just gives us a framework to start thinking critically about our work. At that point, we'll think about taking a break, so you can just got a bit of time to contemplate what we've discussed, what I've introduced to you, and how you might be able to use it. Um, then we'll be able to answer any questions at that point, make sure every, everybody's following along nicely. In the second part, then we'll look at integrating critical thinking into our work ways we can integrate it into studying, into our research, into our writing, into our reading, in any aspects of our studying. And then finally we'll look at how it fits into the overall writing process um, when tackling assignments, writing essays, writing reports or reflective accounts, how to incorporate that critical thinking into that writing. So moving on to the first slide, what is critical thinking? It can mean a great many things to different people in different ways but in an academic context a lot of the learning that takes place is very passive in very passive forms of learning in the tr strictly traditional methods such as uh, listening and taking notes or reading and making notes these are not very active forms of learning and therefore it's very difficult for us to really um, access this knowledge maintain this knowledge and have it for recall whenever we need it at a future date in order to, for that knowledge to become more ingrained in our memories, better for us to be able to recall it, um, we need to try and do something with that knowledge. So using that knowledge, it, it, it activates more stimuli and enables us to recall it better and it's deeper ingrained. And there's a number of ways that we can use knowledge. This might be in discussion with our peers or running seminar sessions um, with your learning set or explaining something through a presentation or group work. When we actually use knowledge in this way, it becomes much more influential in our learning. Critical thinking is just one method that we can actually use for using this knowledge. And th we can use this in a number of ways by questioning the knowledge that is put in front of us. The textbooks that we are recommended to read, the papers, the journals that we identify in our research, questioning the validity, the reliability and the, the credibility of what the author is writing, analysing what they're saying, so comparing it, contrasting it, justifying it, reasoning with it, then also reflecting on it at a later date, so what impact has it had on you as a practitioner and as you've actually had time to consider it, has, does it have more influence on you? And then finally evaluating the knowledge that we gained comparing it and contrasting it with other theories, other principles, other pieces of research that other people have written and therefore being better able to identify the, those that we most strongly associate with. So you can see critical thinking can fill a number of roles within this process by making our learning more active but also developing our understanding of a subject area more confidently and more comprehensively by this questioning and reasoning process. So now, looking at critical thinking in academia, there's two essential areas where critical thinking fits into academia <coughs> and studying. The first is questioning others' claims. So when we're doing our research, when you're doing your reading, and when you're looking at journals and texts, actually in the back of your mind there should be a little voice just questioning and saying how, why, what if, according to who, what justification can the author give for their claims, for the argument they're, they're putting across. So that's the first area. The second area is actually justifying your own claims. So this now comes through our writing. When you're writing assignments, how do you justify your argument? How do you support your claims? Is that based on sound theory, principles and research that you've done? And this develops a critical process and a 
critical approach to our work and it gives our work a much stronger foundation. This makes critical thinking very important for integrating theory into our knowledge, our skills and our values and these are key themes that are very important particularly on the social work degree program. So how does that theory inform our knowledge base and how do we develop that knowledge base based on theory? Does it inform our values? Where do these values come from? So again, does theory, does critical thinking about the research that you've done actually inform your values to any great degree? And also the skills and the experiential learning that we're going through. Again, how does theory and the critical approach of repraising that theory, how does it inform our learning? Perhaps most importantly for many students is going to be that integrating critical thinking into your writing is a way of basically improving your work and making sure that your work is achieving as good a grade as possible. So making good assignments into excellent ones and I'm sure that's probably what many students are after um, in their assignments. So that's about critical thinking um, and I hope that's sort of given you all a, a bit better an idea of what it is, what it means to students, what it should mean to students and what tutors want you to em evidence and demonstrate in your work. What we'll look at now is how does this inform our reflection. There's a number of uh, accounts on reflection and integrating reflection and being reflective practitioners um, such as uh, Jenny Moon or Donald Sean are two that spring to mind. And as they will outline, reflection is an incredibly important part of learning, not just at university as we're studying, but also as a practitioner. So as we go on into a professional capacity, reflecting on our practice and improving on our pr practice is an essential part of our ongoing development. One of the problems with reflection though that is often highlighted by tutors um, at university is that this reflection tends to be very descriptive. Um, so students emphasize on the I did this or I did that or then we did the other. Um, and this is all very useful information but it doesn't actually really explore and get a full insight into accounts, events and incidents that may have happened in your learning or in your placements. So in order to get a better insight into these, we need to explore them a little bit more thoroughly. And the critical thinking model gives you a framework or a structure for which to do that. So what I'd like you to do is the, the model that we're going to introduce now is just bear in mind that the beginning slide of this presentation asked you to think about an incident or an event that might have happened. This might have been while you're on a placement. This might have been recently in your learning. Um, any sort of incident that might have happened recently and how you might be able to use that in a reflective account. And then when we introduce the model over the next couple of slides, I'd just like you to think about how you might use that model to, to incorporate and explore your incident a little bit more thoroughly. As I previously mentioned, um, some of us are naturally very critical in our approach to life, that we ponder and we go over any decision that we might make um, to great levels or extremes. Some others of us are not so critical in our approach. Um, we tend to make more uh, quicker decisions, less thought out processes. Um, for those people, this model just acts as a framework to help you think critically about your work and about your assignments and about many aspects of your life in general. So it's just a framework. It's not um, an absolute. It doesn't have to be used in its entirety. You may pick parts of it that you particularly like or you may choose to develop it to, into a further model. And it's just one of a number of models that are out there to help develop critical thinking. But the model I'm going to introduce has three levels to it. And this is descriptive level, analytical level, and then evaluative level. The next slide that I'm going to introduce will be a complete slide on the critical thinking model. Um, and I'll still talk over this slightly. And then after that slide, we'll just stop for a few minutes, give everyone a time to take in what we've been going over, and start to think how you might apply this model to the incident that we asked you to have it bear in mind. 
So if we have a topic or an event or a, an incident that we have in mind and we keep that at the central part of this overall idea, can you move that? Can we out there? That's better. As we said, we divide this into three areas and that is descriptive information, analytical information and evaluative information. As I mentioned previously, the tendency is to dwell on the descriptive <coughs> information and this can be easy information to identify but it doesn't give us full insights into the event or what took place or into our reflection. So the questions that we might highlight in a descriptive capacity are for instance what took place, what was the event or what was the incident? When did it occur? Who was there? Who else observed it? Who else took place in or who else were stakeholders in that incident? And where did it occur? So very descriptive information but very important nonetheless to contextualize the event that took place. What we now want to try and get a bit more insight into is analyzing this event. So thinking about questions such as why did this happen and how did it happen? Why did I respond this way and how did I respond or how did I react or how did the people around me react? And this is starting to explore it a little bit deeper and starting to look at emotions, feelings um, and reactions that we have to certain situations in order that we can learn from them and use them uh, to sort of not repeat them in the, in the future or in fact if it is a positive event how we might reflect and use that again in a future capacity. Then we go on to evaluative information and the sort of questions that you might ask in this situation are what if or so what or what next. You can see from the model that what if actually crosses borders between analysis and evaluation and that's because it does have a place in both these areas in that we can analyze what if this did happen or what if this didn't happen but also evaluating it well what if I responded differently how else could I have responded how else could I have acted in order to have a different or a, a, a sort of more positive outcome. The last question on evaluation sort of leads into what next and this is where we can start to identify how we might learn from this and how we might develop a, um, our practice from here. So when we think about what next again that leads into descriptive well what are we going to do next? When might we do that and who might be involved in that? So you can see that this is a cyclical model and that we could go around it and get more insight and more information out of a particular incident. So as I said, what I'd like you to do now is just take a few moments, um, send in any questions that you might have about what we've discussed so far, um, look at the model and think about how you might apply it to the critical incident that you had in mind. Okay, one of the questions we've had about um, theory uh, models and methods, um, this, this model is, is based on a lot of theory and it took some time to develop here at Plymouth and it was developed with um, other academics, um, external examiners, tutors, um, study skills advisors, all had a part to play in its development so it is, it is based on a lot of theory. Um, there are a number of ways or methods that you can actually utilize this model. There is no one s sort of simple, um, straightforward way to use it. You can adapt and use it in any which way you want. Um, in that you can even look at um, using it to structure an assignment. So for instance, the descriptive information can form your introductory um, paragraphs. 
the analytical information can form your main body and the evaluative information that you raise can form your conclusions. Um, the other way to look at it as well is that the, the further around the model you get to evaluation, uh, the deeper level of understanding you're demonstrating in your subject area. So by describing something, that's very easy information to locate and, and put across. When we start analyzing it, we start sort of demonstrating and evidencing to your tutors a, a bit better understanding about what you've been reading and researching. But when you can actually evaluate information and compare and contrast it to other theories and ideas, that's when we really demonstrate the deepest level of understanding and is evaluative information is sort of the highest level of Bloom's taxonomy of learning. Um, so the, the method for employing the model, as I said, it can be used to help structure your work, your paragraphs, or even your, your overall assignment. It can be used just to explore your research, or it can be used to sort of demonstrate your, your depth of knowledge and understanding in a subject area. So that there are a number of ways that it can be employed. What we're going to do now is just look at each section of these in a little bit more detail. So again, thinking about a critical in incident or event, and you know we are looking at this more in a reflective capacity. So that that will be the emphasis of looking at it in a little bit more detail. So first of all, looking at the descriptive information. As I said, this is very easy information to identify. And some of the questions that you'll start being raising are, okay, what happened? What actually took pla place? What was the event or the incident that I'm actually reflecting upon? Um, where did it occur? What environment did it occur in? Um, where did it occur in regards to a particular placement, a particular environment, to your surroundings? All of this is worth taking into consideration. When did it occur? What time of day was it? Uh, what time of, within relation to a particular shift were you in? So all this information is, is worthwhile gathering and taking into consideration. And finally, who did it involve? Who else was there? And this can often play an important part of when we're exploring events. Who was there can often really help influence our response. Um, by how we regard those other people. So the descriptive information gives us a good introduction and the background information that is, is really necessary to contextualize a situation. Um, without this information, it's very hard to put it into, a, into place. Um, but as I said, this is not where you get huge amounts of marks because this is information that is quite easy to gather and get across. You really focus on this information if it actually um, has a significant impact or influence on the event. So moving now on to the analytical information, and this is where we really want to, you to start focusing your discussions on um, when you're writing your reflective accounts. So start thinking about, so how did it occur? What were the events leading up to this situation or incident? What took place? What were you doing? So, you know, looking at all that kind of information. And then why did it happen? Was there a reason, a sequence of events that actually caused this situation or incident to occur? Whether it be positive or negative, remember. This is, you know, we need to learn from both areas in our practice placement. Then really starting to explore how did you react? In what way did you respond? Are you actually um, in, a, in an irrational manner or a rational way? Uh, did you think about your response actually before you made a response? Did you think about how you reacted to this incident at the time? So reflecting on that gives us a really good account of um, our learning and, and what we need to learn from it. And then finally on the analytical side of things, Okay, what if it was different? What, sequen what if the sequence of events were different? How would I have responded then? Would I have responded in the same sort of way? So you can see from the analytical information that this is where we now really can enables us to explore and incorporate theory within to the, within to our accounts. Okay, looking at our our values, our competencies your knowledge base and your skills and also onto the, the sort of way that we're reflecting. Um, in your descriptive side of things it's quite problematic or difficult to incorporate theory into that side of things. 
But when we start analysing it and looking at your knowledge and basing it on what theories and principles that you've gained that knowledge from, or your values, what's formed those, what, um, what writing, what accounts, what history um, in your own life has formed those values. And this is all really valuable information and worth starting to explore for critical incidents and events that we are reflecting on. Finally, looking at the evaluative information, and this is where we start to think about synthesizing everything, pulling it together, um, and looking at offering sort of recommendations and conclusions from a particular event. So again, the questions that we might look at um, asking are, well, what does this mean? Okay, what, what has this meant in your development, your learning, your professional capacity, your placement, um, you in, in general, without thinking about it specifically about learning? Has it has an Im impact and what are you taking from it? What's its significance? What role does it play in that development? Has it been a, a really f sort of fundamental um, incident or activity that you've learned from and have sort of can treat it as a threshold concept and that it can take you and lead you on to a higher level of your own understanding and knowledge in this area. Then really looking at how you can learn from it. What would perhaps you would do um, if it occurred again? What, what way would you respond? What would you do? What would you do differently? If anything at all, if it's a very positive um, outcome, then how can you look at mirroring that and replicating it in a future scenario. So as I mentioned earlier, looking at the implications, um, looking at possible solutions to an incident, um, does it need further development, do you need to do more research or reading on this particular area of study, and what recommendations and conclusions can you offer for this um, as a sort of concluding remarks or summarizing and, and synthesizing all this information and pulling it together. So that's sort of investigating and exploring the model in a little bit more detail, each of the different levels. As I said, each of the levels are very, very important on their own, but it's actually when they all combine that you're able to bring together and offer a really good account of a particular event. And this will help provide you with a really sort of logical, progressive argument to put forward in an assignment when you're investigating and reflecting on your placement, your learning, and incidents that have taken place in those. Now looking at integrating the model um, within to our general studying, um, reading, writing, thinking, and this starts with thinking and just discussing ideas with your peers, with your tutors, with people you're on placement with, with service users, whoever it might be, thinking about the discussions that take place and in the back of your mind, again, that small voice just saying, how, why, what do they mean by this? How do they mean that? How can they support that judgment? Um, really start to give you a good insight into people's backgrounds, into what they mean, and starts giving you an ability to generate ideas that you might want to go on and research and explore in a little bit more detail. Then with our reading, as we begin to do this research, always questioning the motives, the implications, the meanings that the author is trying to get across to you and get, get you to understand. Um, quite often it, in critically thinking and appraising texts, it's not necessarily what the author is saying, but it's also about what they're not saying. So looking to identify any gaps or weaknesses in their writing, in their research, in their reports, and looking to question these and what implications they have on the overall study. And this gives us a real insight into the, the credibility and validity of what we're reading. And then in what capacity can we use that in an academic context? Can what we're reading stand up to reasonable questioning? As long as that questioning is done in a constructive um, framework rather than just destructively, then it's a, it's a really good way to develop your academic studying and research. Then finally, in the writing of your assignments, um, thinking critically about the points that you're trying to get across, selecting those with, um, which are most appropriate to this assignment or to fulfill the um, assignment brief or the requirements of the module or program. How can you evidence these? How can you explore these key points and themes to the greatest of your ability? 
and then the statements and claims that you make in your assignments how have you supported those how have you integrated theory to better support those claims and justifying your argument okay this slide we're nearly finished now is just going to look at um, how critical thinking and writing fits into the overall writing process um, it is it should be a part of your development part of your researching part of your writing every part of your academic study but looking at, uh, at the overall sort of assignment approach what we always recommend is before you begin your research before you begin writing or any reading is to analyze the question that you've been set um, and a model that we recommend for using this is what we call the TAP model <coughs> and this is where in the assignment brief or the question or the outline you identify the topics the action and the parameters so the topic would be the central key, key theme um, that is to do with the question the action is what you're being asked to do with it and then the parameter is within what boundaries one area of developing your ideas that not many students actually do before they begin their research is to just map and jot down your existing knowledge um, it's quite often students don't believe they have a huge amount of existing knowledge in their particular area and it's always worth just getting this down on paper because it helps develop your research ideas and can better focus your research. There's a number of ways you can do this, such as mind mapping or spider diagrams, or one that um, is receiving a lot of praise at the moment is just free writing. Having a blank piece of paper and just writing, jotting your ideas down that come into your head. Don't think about it too hard, don't stop, don't edit, don't censure, don't correct it just write what comes into your mind about this particular assignment or this particular incident that you're exploring reflectively and it can really help to develop your ideas and focus your research what you want to explore in a little bit more detail this will then identify some key points and themes and questions that you want to be the focus and attention of your research that you believe are going to be the most important to evidencing and supporting your overall argument in any given assignment. From this we plan and conduct our research. Um, I have to, it's no getting away from it. You do have to do some reading in order to support and demonstrate your understanding of a subject area. And the more we do of that, the better informed your argument, the wider range of opinions you're going to be able to get across in your assignments. From this we then develop uh, an overall structure or an outline which we then go on to write one or two drafts however many it may take before you're actually happy with um, your final assignment. Perhaps one of the most important parts of any assignment um, is the proofreading process and one of the ways we recommend that you do this is actually proofread it aloud. I know that by the time you've written a, a say a 3,000 word assignment the last thing you want to do is read through it again but we strongly emphasize the need and the importance of proofreading your own work you know what you want to say you know how you want to say it so make sure it does that your assignment does that so read through your work read through it aloud you take much more notice of the punctuation the natural pauses the sentence structure signposting information so that it all links in and develops a logical and progressive argument throughout the assignment and this is all part of integrating critical thinking into your writing then the final aspect of it is reflecting on this whole process as well um, what parts of the the overall writing process did you feel went particularly well did you spend too much time on the research and didn't get on to the writing soon enough or did you feel that you could have done better in the actual planning and structuring before you began your research it's really important again we're talking about reflective accounts to reflect on your own learning and how we can learn from this develop and evolve and, and demonstrate better assignments in the future so that's a little bit about how critical thinking and writing fits into the overall picture of completing an assignment I hope that will be a sort of useful guideline too to many people. So in summary then, just to bring it all together, um, briefly what we've covered and then again we'll look at answering any questions that anybody maybe come up with um, after this. 
Critical thinking is it's it's a, a word that is is sort of mooted around in academia an awful lot, and a lot of students are sort of still left not knowing quite what it means. And basically, what it means is just having a questioning approach um, to your work and to others' work. Okay, and this should be done in a sort of constructive manner. We tend to have quite negative um, understanding of critical thinking in the in sort of in UK and in our society because of its close association with criticism. Well, criticism isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as it's justified and supported and done constructively rather than destructively. Okay, so it's about supporting, justifying not only your claims but the claims of others as well. Hopefully the model that we've introduced will at least give you a, a basic framework for which to develop and evolve your critical thinking. Um, if you are stuck writing an assignment, and you know I'm very aware of how this can be sometimes, just sat there looking at a blank screen and thinking, where shall I begin on this, how shall I start? Simply start at the beginning of the model and think about the descriptive information. Who was there? What does it mean? What research has taken place? Where was this done? When was this done? By the time you've addressed those sort of questions, you, you can have two, three hundred words written and your ideas will start to hopefully flow a bit more freely. So it's really good at getting the ball rolling and getting, you know, getting some writing done towards an assignment. Um, as I mentioned previously, this model can be used in a number of contexts. It can be used in a reflective capacity, as has been the emphasis on this presentation mainly. It can be used as a critical approach to the text that you're reading. It can be used to, as a structural framework for which to develop a, an es essay or an assignment. But it's all, it can also be used in a, in a sort of way of just exploring, exploring sorry, your own ideas and your own understanding and knowledge of an area. So I hope it's been useful to you. Um, please feel free to ask any questions you might have of um, this presentation or critical thinking in, in general and you know maybe even how learning development or any of the um, staff or tutors on this program can help you in that aspect. Um, the last slide that I'm going to leave you with has got some very useful references, um, particularly um, useful for social work and sort of reflective approaches, reflective and experiential learning for those. So I'll put those up now and look forward to answering any questions that you might have. Okay, um, hopefully you've had a chance to jot down those references. They are um, excellent references and very useful in reflective writing and being critical in your reflective writing. Um, this um, presentation has been recorded, um, so we will hopefully, technology providing, be able to put it up on SharePoint for those who want to review any of the information or look over it at a later date. And the last slide I'm going to leave you with um, is just a little bit about how to contact learning development um, it's got our URL address www.plymouth.ac.uk forward slash learn or our email address which goes through to all the learning development advisors um, or the number there for tutorials. Um, and as I said, any academic questions you might have about structure, exams, revision, reading, general study skills, time management, we're more than happy to answer those questions. I will emphasize that the information we give is non-subject specific. So for subject specific advice and the content of your assignments, you do need to see your tutors, faculty staff or subject librarians or talk amongst yourselves. Um, I hope you found the presentation useful, I hope you find the, the model useful and are able to incorporate it um, into your assignments and um, if anybody does have any questions please uh, let us have those now 
or you might want to e email us at a later date. one basis and a completely confidential again about any academic issue that you might have and you can book those by the telephone number 01752 587 456 or going to 3 Portland Mews here on the Drake Circus campus. Finally we also have a drop-in zone which is in the library on the first floor of the library just on the right hand side as you go in through the main entrance. Um, every day of the week, at certain times, there is a learning development advisor there. There is a timetable up in this area to see when there will be a learning development advisor there. Uh, you don't have to book this service. You can just turn up and ask any questions that you might have regarding your studying. So that's a little bit about learning development. So we'll now move on to the presentation uh, that we have outlined for today. So this is going to be on critical reflection, thinking and writing. Have I got um, first, what we're going to cover is uh, what is critical thinking. Um, quite often, students see this written on feedback of their assignments and their work and uh, feedback that they get from their tutors. There's not enough. Okay. Um, so, without any further ado, I'd like to now hand you over to Joe, who um, is going to take you through uh, the presentation around uh, critical reflection, thinking, and writing. Okay. Okay, Joe. Hi Andy, thanks for that introduction. Um, you can put me in the corner there. Um, so this is just an introductory slide to this presentation. A um, little bit about uh, learning development and who we are. And as Andy said, this is a, a presentation on critical reflection, thinking and writing, primarily aimed at the social work students, um, years two and three, out on practice learning placements at the moment. Um, basically, um, learning development are a department that are aimed at supporting all students across all faculties and all levels at the University of Plymouth. Um, so we can give any academic advice, but that advice is non-subject specific. So if you're having any trouble with writing essays, referencing, researching, or anything like that, please don't hesitate to get in. But we have advertised this widely across the MA social work program and uh, across faculty as well, I believe. So there may be people who aren't necessarily linked in with social work uh, watching today. Um, just really want to basically give you a bit of history. Last year we um, attempted to do some webcasts and we put on about five webcasts on a variety of topics and the response was, uh, was encouraging and we decided this year to continue with that. And uh, uh, we, this is a repeat webcast from last year which uh, unfortunately we, we weren't able to record. Um, but this year, hopefully, the uh, recording of this will be made available to you on SharePoint. Um, interestingly, we chose this time of day for the webcasting because we felt that um, students in particular, they may be out on placement, but they might be able to get access to a computer for half an hour during the day, maybe inviting some of their colleagues to, to, to view the webcast as well. Um, obviously, uh, evenings and weekends are out of the question. so. We've tried to find the best time during the day. If uh, you've got any suggestions about how we might adapt that, then feel free to uh, speak to us. In touch with us. A number of ways that you can access our resources or get in touch with us. The first is through our portal pages, uh, the address you can see on the screen here. Uh, you will need your University of Plymouth uh, login and username to access those, but there's a range of study guides and additional resources and links to other sites that are useful for academic studying. 
We have an email service, again you can see the address on screen here, the best email address in the university, simply learn at plymouth.ac.uk. Uh, you can send small sections of your work or any academic question to this email address and one of our, our advisors will respond to you as quickly as possible. I must emphasise that this isn't a proofreading service. We can't proofread your work, we can offer general feedback and comments and only on small sections of your work, not whole assignments. We offer group workshops, so if there's a collection of students who want to get together and address a specific issue, then please get in touch with us and we can do that. We also, also offer individual tutorials, which are done on a one-to-one. Okay, um, just turn this thing down a little bit. Sorry about that. Okay, welcome uh, people who are sort of logged in. I don't know how many people we've got logged in at the moment. Sal, is there about seven people? So there's seven of us uh, tuning into this webcast. I just want to introduce you. In a minute, I'm going to hand you over to Joe Allenson from uh, Learning Development. Uh, Joe's going to give you a, a, um, a presentation, basically, uh, lasting about half an hour. There's a break halfway through for us all to stop and reflect upon some of the material that Joe's going to be presenting to you. Um, the, the, the subject is critical reflection, thinking and writing, and primarily it's aimed at uh, BSc social work students, uh, years two and three.